Hello YouTube, how's it going today? Welcome to Cartagena. Cartagena is a port city on the north coast of Colombia, which is the Caribbean part of the country. Yeah, it's, uh, what can I say about it? It's hot. <laughs> this part of the world is hot, significantly hotter than Medellin where I just came from. I flew from Medellin to Cartagena uh, yesterday. Domestic flights within Colombia are very affordable. It was about 30 US dollars to get here. And as soon as I stepped out of the airplane at the airport, you would just immediately feel the humidity. Right now it's 31 degrees Celsius, it feels like 36. And I'm just sitting here in this chill little park. There's a church behind me. A few people enjoying the shade of the park benches. And the gentle breeze flowing through this park, making the leaves dance all around us. But enough about the leaves. What I really want to show you is this way. And that's the wall that surrounds the old city of Cartagena. Now Cartagena is a very old city. I saw something online that said it's the oldest Spanish speaking city in all the Americas. It was founded by the Spanish in 1533. Though of course that's a very European way of looking at things. There were, there were uh, people indigenous to the continent of South America who were living there long before that. But however you choose to uh, put the start date of Cartagena, one thing is for certain, it is a very, very old city. And when you have an old, wealthy city that's on the port, that's on the ocean, what does that attract? Why is the rum always gone? <laughs> Pirates. And so Cartagena had a big problem with pirates trying to invade this city, take all their delicious fish that they have here on the coast of Colombia. And so they built a wall, a huge wall actually, it's about 11 kilometers in length, all around the old city, which of course was the city of Cartagena at the time. Now it's one of the main tourist attractions of this region. Look at that cool looking bird. Hey buddy, just chilling. See, look at the car windshields as I pass by, covered from the sun. Another indication of just how hot it can get here. Now there's a few main entrances to get inside the walls. Uh, I'm gonna walk around the corner and take you to one of them, and then I'm gonna show you the old city. Let's go. So there's one of the car entrances over there. Here's one of the entrances. And just like that, we have entered into the old city. I'm going to uh, enter into the shade. Hopefully as this video progresses, you won't see my skin get progressively more red. Oh, look at that, there's somebody walking on top of the wall. I didn't even know you could get up there, but apparently you can. Of course, there's the car entrance. Very interesting place. Look at that building over there. Brightly colored buildings everywhere. I'm trying to see if Cartagena reminds me of anywhere else I've been. With the wall around the main tourist zone, it reminds me a bit of uh, San Juan, the beautiful capital city of uh, Puerto Rico. And to be honest, it, it, it's a bit reminiscent of Havana as well in Cuba. Though of course, that could just be the Spanish and Caribbean influence coming through. But yeah, there's something about this place that's distinctly its own as well. Check out the work on that uh, street sign behind me. All I can think about is portobello mushrooms. I'm getting hungry. Let's see what it says here. There's actually a sign about it. The Negro councils were associations that congregated the enslaved black populations belonging to the same cultural group. The council served as places of solidarity, solidarity, celebration, conservation of their own African languages, memory, and cultural resistance. In the 18th century, one of the councils of black Carabales 
was located on this street. You know, this is probably a good time to talk about one of the interesting things about Colombia as a country. Okay, obviously the, the main language is Spanish. It is in many ways a Hispanic country, but it has this part of the African identity built into it as well, especially here on the Caribbean coast. And so I would say culturally speaking, demographically speaking, it's a very diverse country. Uh, you can't look at one person and say that's a Colombian. It's, the mixture is built into the DNA of what Colombia is. And of course there were indigenous people even before the Hispanics, which makes it even more, um, more diverse. Just crossing the street here. Always an adventure in Colombia. Don't forget to look both ways. And also don't forget to look up because uh, above us here in uh, Cartagena we have some interesting colors. Obviously here they're matching the colors of the Colombian flag. Red, blue and yellow. ¿Qué va a pedir? Bien. Gracias. Tengo pollo frito, pollo en salsa, frito. Frito. Sopa. Gracias. Now listen, there's no denying one thing. The old city of Cartagena is the peak tourist town. Uh, one of the more touristic places in all of Colombia, which means some of the restaurants can jack up the prices. When I travel and I look for a good meal at a good price, I like the kind of places that just have handwritten menus, the kind of places that are full of Colombians, the kind of places where they just sit you at the back uh, next, to a, <laughs> next to a sack of potatoes. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be really good. My soup just arrived, check this out. Normally if you get a menu of the day and it comes with a soup, it's just something like very basic. But here, I mean look at this thing, there's potatoes, there's meat, there's, there's, there's corn. This is quite the starter. So that meal cost me 12,000 Colombian pesos. Great food at a great price. But there's one other thing I gotta tell you about. This is a true story. This just happened to me like, I don't know, two minutes ago. Uh, I just walked onto the street and it looked very photogenic. So I pulled out my camera. And I didn't notice, but I guess as I pulled my camera out of my backpack, my wallet was also in my backpack and my wallet fell out. And I was just gonna film something. But immediately, like two seconds later, this, this guy who was walking past, uh, this Colombian guy just went, hey, and like pointed and like pointed out that my wallet had fallen out. And uh, yeah, I really appreciated that. You know, it's, uh, it was a simple gesture, but like, oh, well on. <laughs> as, I, uh, <laughs> as I move out of the way for this, this uh, chica who is getting out of her house. Um, yeah, it was a simple gesture, but you know, it was, it was nice. It was nice to see that uh, people are looking out for themselves and looking out for foreigners like me in this neighborhood in Cartagena. Anyway, let's keep going. Look at this uh, interesting archway up ahead. Must be a park or something. A lot of interesting street art around here too. Hey, my friend, come on, tell us a gorra. Hey, where you from? Where you from? Where you from? Canada. Canada, hey, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless Canada. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless Canada. Hey, you my friend, come on, tell Canada. Bienvenido a Cartagena.
that hot sun is starting to get to me. I just stepped into this uh, cafe restaurant place. Very interesting interior, as you can see. I'm gonna stop for coffee, chill out a little bit during the hot part of the day. And uh, yeah, just enjoy the moment here in Cartagena. Is this part of the city ever cool? I mean, just look at the building. Look at the paint, how fresh everything looks. Everything, they've really done a good job taking care of this part of the city. You know, with all due respect to Havana, which I mentioned earlier on, or frankly, even Bogota, which I visited earlier on this trip. And when you go to those cities, you see a lot of beautiful old buildings, but they're not in great condition. They, they really are sometimes falling apart. But here in downtown Cartagena, you can see a, uh, I mean, these buildings look beautiful. They look, they look spotless, you know? But since I'm being honest about the good parts of Cartagena, let me also be honest about one of the negative parts, at least as a foreign tourist like myself. The hustlers and the salespeople in the city are pretty intense. Uh, occasionally, you'll be walking through and they'll just follow you and they'll try to get you in a restaurant and you'll make it clear that you're just trying to keep walking. But they'll ask again, they'll ask again, they'll keep walking with you. Um, and you know, I, I, get, I get it. People are trying to sell things. People are trying to make a living. So I'm not here to, uh, to say that Colombians like, don't have a right to sell things. But as a foreigner, you know, if it's happening again and again and again, it can be kind of intense. Uh, as a foreigner, you just need to be aware what a fair price is sometimes. Just don't feel intimidated. And if you don't want something, just keep walking. You know, if someone's trying to sell you something, just don't stop, you know, say thank you. You don't need to be too rude about it, but just keep walking. And listen to the Colombian viewers, you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't anything against Colombians. I mentioned earlier that one of the Colombians literally saved my wallet. So I, I know there's a lot of great people in this country. This is nothing against Colombians. It's just a little travel tip that hopefully some of you will uh, find helpful. Es café? Sí. ¿A cuánto cuesta? Es de mil. Sí, un café, por favor. Es mi primer día en Cartagena. Sí. sí. ¿Y ¿Con quién está solo? Es en, uh, sí. Ah, ¿y de es en muy, muy buena ciudad. Sí, ¿y de dónde usted? Soy de Canadá. Ah, de Canadá. Ah, sí. Pero, ¿Habla el español? Un poquito. Un poquito, pues, ¿se le entiende? Sí. Ah, sí, sí. <laughs> Gracias. Muchas gracias. I know I just had a coffee, but I saw that lady walking with her uh, pots of coffee, pre-made coffee selling on the streets. I decided to get one. You know, why not? The coffee looks black, but I can tell she already added some sugar or some. Uh, and honestly, I think this coffee is even better than the one I had at the restaurant. No offense to that restaurant, you know, they had a cool atmosphere, it was a nice place to sit for a bit. But this one's made with love, and you can't beat that. Anyway, we just made it to Plaza de la Trinidad. It's still late afternoon. This place will be packed at night. It's a, it's a Friday, so by Friday night, this place will be packed with people, packed with drinks, packed with music. Right now, there's just people like me enjoying the late afternoon sun taking a chance to sit for a bit. Super chill spot.